As a first example, let's compute an integral by actually using the Riemann sum definition of our integral. So remember that the Riemann sum definition was the following, double integral over a rectangle of our function f of x, y, dA. This is defined to be the limit of the sum, so it's a Riemann sum. I'm going to break up the limits and write it in the following order now. The limit as n approaches infinity, sum i goes from 1 to n, limit as m goes to infinity, sum j goes from 1 to m of f of x i star comma y j star delta y j delta x i. Okay, I've made some choices here, and we'll talk about um, when it's okay to make choices like this moving forward. But right now, it's, it's always going to be okay to make this choice. But what I've done is I've made a choice to separate out the x variables and y variables. And write this as kind of a Riemann sum inside of another Riemann sum. And that's totally fine. And so what we're going to do, of course, is compute the inner Riemann sum first, and then deal with the outer one. I made another choice here as well, and that was that I in replaced, if you watched our entire last lecture, you'll see that we are allowed to choose any test point in each rectangle, and they don't have to be related to each other. So I replaced this choice of xij star, yij star, with a more systematic um, choice of just xi star, yj star. So this means that for every xi, I've chosen the same star point between those for every value of y. Okay. Um, again, we're going to take these limits, so it doesn't matter how you choose these test points in, in computation. And so I'm choosing one that's going to be a choice that's going to be easier for us to actually compute. Okay, so let's start with this inner integral. By the way, the function f here in this scenario, this entire formula here, that's given by this integrand. So f of xy is 3x squared minus 2y. So let's start with the Riemann sum in the y direction. All right. By the way, the limits here, these, these are the, the y limits are from 0 to 2. The x limits are from 0 to 1. All right, so let's start with the y portion of the Riemann sum. The first thing we need to do is we know that the interval that we're integrating over is 0, 2. We just reminded ourselves of that. And our function, f of x, y, we're going to treat the x as though it's a constant. And so this is like a constant minus 2 times y. Okay? And so our delta y, we're going to pick a fixed interval. And the y's are in terms of m here. So we're going to choose delta y equal to 2 minus 0 over m or just 2 over m. All right, this is all this is going to feel very familiar to what you do in calc 1 when you do Riemann sum definitions of integrals, except we're going to have to end up doing it twice eventually. Um, the next choice is how do we choose our y i y j stars? So y j with a star is always going to be the starting point, so c plus j times delta y. Again, we'll take uh, these left endpoint left endpoints here, or right endpoint. I guess we're taking right endpoints if we start at 1. Um, so c is just 0, plus j times delta y is j uh, times 2 over m. And so our y j star is 2 times j over m. All right, and now this y j star test point has to get plugged into the function. So f of x comma y j star this, this becomes then 3x squared, remember x is a constant as far as y is concerned, minus 2 times 2j over m, so 4j over m. All right, and now this all has to go into the Riemann sum. So at this point we have the limit as m approaches infinity of the sum j goes from 1 to m of our function, that's this, so 3x squared minus 4jm over m times delta, j, uh, delta y, delta y is 2 over m. All right, and we're just going to compute this portion and then plug it back into the other limit. Now, 
as usual, the first thing we should do is multiply through and get rid of these parentheses. So this is equal to the limit, m approaches infinity, sum, j goes from 1 to capital M, of now we need the parentheses because of the sigma, but um, everything's going to be inside now. So this will be 6x squared over m minus, this one becomes 8j squared over m squared. Okay, and now we have to, whoops, it's only 8j, it's not j squared, sorry. Almost had a big error there, but uh, there's no extra j happening there. It's just another m. So now we have to divide this up by the in terms of the sigma, replace the sigmas, and then take the limit. So now it's going to become the limit m approaches infinity of this. The sigma, the summation, only cares about the j's, not anything else. So this 6x squared over m can be factored out. But what's left here is sum j goes from 1 to m of 1 minus, same thing here, 8 over m squared can get factored out. We still have a sum, j equals 1 to m of j. Okay, and now we can apply summation formulas to each of these. This term, if you add up 1 plus 1 plus 1 m times, this is just m. And this one, the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to m is m times m plus 1 over 2. Okay, so that's going to get rid of the sigmas. I need some more paper here, so I'm going to turn the page. But what I'm going to write down is the limit as m approaches infinity of m times this minus m times m plus 1 over 2 times all this. So that's where we're at with this integral now. And so here's where we are. The limit m approaches infinity of, remember it was 6x squared times m over m. So 6x squared times m over m minus, the other one was 8m times m plus 1 over m squared times 2. 8m, m plus 1 over 2m squared. And we just have to take this limit now. This is a limit in terms of m, so of course m's cancel. It's a limit as m approaches infinity, so actually only the highest power of m is going to rule here. Uh, so this m squared cancels this one, and actually the lower order term here also gets canceled. I mean, we should be more careful about this probably, but this is calc 3, so uh, make sure you know how to do these limits as m approaches infinity. And at this point, what we end up with then is the answer to this limit is 6x squared minus 4. Again, especially with this limit right here, if you're not comfortable with that just being 4, uh, make sure you work this one out. Show all the details at least once so that you know how to do it, and then from there you can just go, go for it. So what we've done now is we've done one of the limits, and what we have, what's left, right, is our double integral over our rectangle of 3x squared minus 2y dA. We've now reduced it to this. We have now the limit as n approaches infinity, sum i goes from 1 to n, of this is what's left inside this this uh, scenario. So 6x squared minus 4. Um, we still have our delta x i out here. This is an x. This right here, this x, um, technically, this x should be an x i with a star. I was a little loose about that on the last one. But this is what we need to compute now. And remember, our x is varying from 0 to 1. So one more Riemann sum, and then we'll be done with this one. So let me turn the page. Again, our delta x, we're going to choose this to be evenly spaced. So this will be 1 minus 0 over n, or just 1 over n. And we're going to choose our xi with a star to be a plus i times delta x, usual right endpoint rule. And so again, since we go from 0 to 1, this is 0 plus i over n, or just i over n. This now needs to get plugged into our function. And our function after the first integral is this, 6x squared minus 4. So this becomes 6 times i over n quantity squared minus 4. Okay, and now we have all the pieces we need. 
So our Riemann sum is the limit n approaches infinity. Sum i goes from 1 to capital N of 6 i over capital N squared minus 4 all times i over capital N. Again, we distribute everything. So this is the limit n approaches infinity. Sum i goes from 1 to capital N. This is now 6i cubed. Sorry, I made another mistake here. I'm going, I'm trying, I'm going too fast. This is delta x right here. So this is just 1 over n. 1 over n right here. So 6i squared is, is, is what it should be. Over n cubed though, because n squared here, there's another n here. Minus, this is just 4 over n. Okay. So limit n approaches infinity. Now we've got two sigmas, and again, everything but i's can come out of these. So 6 over n cubed. Sum i goes from 1 to capital N of i squared. Minus 4 over n. There's no i's there. But we can't ignore the i's. So this becomes, can't ignore the sigma at least. Sigma of i goes from 1 to n of 1. And just like before, this sum is just n. And this sum right here, some of you might remember, this sum is um, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So these are formulas that you should know for the sigma. If you don't remember them, you can always look them up within reason. Um, you'll have to know them at some point, but um, you should know at least up to i cubed, I would say. So some i goes from 1 to n of 1, i, i squared, i cubed. So look those up if you need to. We're almost done here. This is now the limit. n approaches infinity. What's left after all this? This one becomes 6 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6 times n cubed minus, this one is just 4n over n. Okay, and then again, make sure you know how to do these limits as n approaches infinity. So, I don't know what this is, but it's going to have to stay there. So, number one, these sixes cancel. The leading coefficient here is going to be 2n cubed over n cubed. So, this limit's going to be 2, and this one's going to be. Uh, minus 4 here, and so what we end up with after taking this limit is that this first limit is 2 minus 4, and so the answer to our integral is negative 2. All right, we talked about in the setup about how to treat, uh, how to consider this like a volume. This function was not positive over our rectangle though, so it's hard to interpret this as a volume, but this is the correct answer. To